Take a close look at this reptile. It's a snake, right? Take a closer look. You might think I'm delusional at first when I tell you that this is actually a lizard, but hear me out. This is the Eastern Glass Lizard, one of the most common native lizard species in the southeastern US, but one that is rarely ever seen due to its secretive nature. If you live in the southeastern coastal plain, chances are one of these unique lizards is hiding somewhere in your backyard right now. Let's learn about why this amazing creature is not a snake, and whether or not you should fear these animals. All right, children, this right here that I have in my hands is one of my favorite lizard species. You heard me right there. This is a lizard. This is not a snake. This is the Eastern Glass Lizard, which is one of the few native species of legless lizards that we have here in Florida. I might be wondering, how on earth can you tell that this is a lizard and not a snake? Well, first of all, this pattern that this has with those vertical bars near the head, as well as that kind of checkering on the top, and that yellow belly is very distinctive for this species, the Eastern Glass Lizard. But not all glass lizards have this exact same pattern. But the way that you can generally tell if something is a legless lizard or if it's a snake is that legless lizards have ear holes that snakes don't have. So legless lizards have significantly better hearing than snakes do. Legless lizards also have eyelids that they could use to blink, unlike snakes, which have a clear scale covering the top of each of their eyes that prevents them from being able to blink. And also, glass lizards have a significantly longer tail that they can drop. If you look at the underside of a glass lizard or a snake, you will see something that is called the cloaca. That is the opening that they use to let out their uh, digestive waste, and also in terms of females, their eggs. If you look at a snake's underside, the cloaca is very close to the end of the snake's body. Meanwhile, on a glass lizard, its body is basically like half tail. You can see the cloaca is very close to the midpoint. You might see that when I'm holding this, my hands are only gripped tightly above this cloaca. And I'm barely touching, and if I am touching, very gently, the tail. Now that is because glass lizards, like you might be able to infer by the name, have an extremely fragile tail. Again, unlike snakes, which can't drop their tails, glass lizards can drop their tails, and their reflex is very, very sensitive, especially compared to many other lizard species. And that is probably because since the species lacks legs, it has less leverage to get away from predators as it is significantly slower than an anole or an iguana or another kind of lizard with legs. So the tail dropping behavior is much more sensitive in the glass lizard and is a much more widely used defense mechanism against predators than it is in other lizard species. You can actually tell that this glass lizard right here has dropped part of its tail at one point because there's a little bit of discoloration at the end of the tail and it's a little bit of a knob forming at the end of the tail too. But this glass lizard, besides that tiny little injury right there, seems to be doing just fine. Now glass lizards do get quite a bit larger than this. I've seen them get almost twice as long and definitely like twice as wide. But this is still a pretty nicely sized glass lizard right here. Glass lizards do have a reputation of being very frantically moving animals. But as you can see, once it's getting used to me, it is actually sitting quite calmly on my hand and seems to not mind me presenting it to you guys very much. Now there is actually a very good chance that you probably have one of these eastern glass lizards in your backyard if you're watching this. Glass lizards are a very common occurrence in urban areas. The only problem is you almost never see them because these things live underground. I found this one under a log, but you'll also just find them in underneath the soil layer, in leaf litter, basically anywhere else underneath cover where you won't be able to see them. They basically only come out in the open during the nighttime. But don't worry, there is no reason to fear having these in your backyard. They are completely harmless, as you can see, very completely non-aggressive animals. Harmless to people, they are non-venomous, they are not bitey at all, they stay out of your way, and they do a great job eating some of these subterranean pest animals that you might not want to get into your house. Here in Florida, we do get a couple other glass lizard species. This one, the eastern glass lizard, is the only one I've ever seen, and it is by far the most common here. However, down in the Everglades, there's a species known as the island glass lizard that looks pretty similar to the eastern glass lizard, but has a longer face and is overall paler, more cream-colored in coloration. 
I'd really love to someday find an island glass lizard. But for now, I'm really enjoying having this beautiful eastern glass lizard in hand. All right, children, I hope you enjoyed learning about this absolutely gorgeous eastern glass lizard. But unfortunately, right now, it's time to let it go back underneath this log so it could keep eating insects and other subterranean invertebrates.